Hi, welcome to my home. Today I'm going to show you how to install Leviton's new Slimline series of GFCIs. We make a standard GFCI that's tamper resistant and Slimline. Now Slimline offers 25% more space savings in your box. We also make a tamper resistant Slimline with a guide light. Two guide lights on either side of the device that will actually turn on in the dark. And lastly, we have a self-test tamper resistant and Slimline GFCI. The device will actually check itself every 15 minutes to ensure proper operation. Just an extra level of safety. Pretty cool. Before we begin the installation though, we want to remember safety first. Let's go shut off the power. Find the appropriate breaker and turn the power off. So now that I've shut the power off, I still want to take a handheld tester and check the device to make sure that the power is actually off at the device and I see that it is, so we're good to go. Now I'm going to take a flathead screwdriver and go ahead and remove the wall plate. So next I'm going to go ahead and take my Phillips head screwdriver and I'm just going to go ahead and remove the device from the wall and pull it out so that I can see my wires. So I've gone ahead and pulled the device out of the wall and I see that I have four wires connected to the device, not counting my ground or my bare copper wire. And I see that the four wires are coming from two different cables. So what I want to go ahead and do is I'm going to remove two of the wires coming from the same cable. And the reason I'm going to do this is so that I can determine which set of wires are my line or my load. Right? My line wires are my power wires. And this will be important for when we wire up the GFCI. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. The first thing we're going to want to do is take our Phillips head screwdriver and I'm going to go ahead and remove the top two which I see are coming from one cable and I'm just going to take them right off the device and then I'll show you what we do next. So now that I've removed the two wires I want to go ahead and take wire nuts and cap the wires making sure to twist the wire nut clockwise and you want to make sure they're tight so that they don't come off. And then I'm going to go ahead and fold them and push them into the back of the box and we're going to go ahead and remount the device to the box. So I've gone ahead and mounted the device and I'm putting the wall plate on and we're going to go ahead and restore the power and then we'll plug something in to see if the receptacle's live. If the receptacle's live, then we know that the two wires connected to the receptacle are our line wires. Let's go ahead and turn on the power. Let's restore the power. So now that I've turned the power on, I'm going to go ahead and plug in this lamp and I see that it works. So I know that the two wires connected to the outlet are my line wires or my power wires. So now I'm going to go ahead, go back to my breaker and shut the power off. Find the appropriate breaker and turn the power off. So I've shut the power back off and taking my handheld tester, I still want to check to make sure the power is off at the outlet. And I see that it is so we can go ahead and remove our wall plate and remove the device from the wall. So I've gone ahead and pulled the outlet out of the box and pulled my two load wires out and I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the two wires attached to the device and put a piece of tape around the wire so that I know that they're my line wires, my power wires. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've gone ahead and removed the old receptacle and I taped my wires that I denoted were my line wires or my power wires and now taking my guide light GFCI I'm going to go ahead and take my bare copper wire or my ground wire and I want to place it underneath the terminal clamp, right, that little brass terminal clamp on my green screw or my green ground terminal. Then taking my Phillips, I'll just tighten that up. There we go. And now we'll turn it over. So now I'm going to go ahead and wire up my two line wires or the wires that I taped earlier. The GFCI clearly marks the two terminals that are your line terminals. You'll also see a piece of yellow tape on the bottom. These are for your load wires. So we'll go ahead and wire the line side first. So I'm going to go ahead and take my white or neutral wire that I've marked with tape so I know it's my line and I'm going to go ahead and connect it to the silver terminal on the line side of my GFCI. Now there are two ways to connect this wire to the GFCI. There's the side wire method, 
where I would wrap the bare copper clockwise around the terminal screw, or I can go ahead and insert it underneath the terminal clamp back wire method and just take my Phillips head screwdriver and tighten the clamp down on the wire. So now I'm going to go ahead and take my black wire or my hot wire that I marked with tape so I know it's my line wire and insert it on the brass terminal of the line side of my GFCI. I'm just going to slide it under the terminal clamp, take my Phillips, go ahead and tighten the terminal screw, tighten the terminal clamp on the wire. And now I'm going to go ahead and remove the yellow sticker on my load terminals. So now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with our load wires. I've taken my black wire and inserted it under the terminal clamp of the brass terminal on my load side. And now just taking my Phillips, I'll go ahead and tighten that terminal clamp down. And then we'll do the same thing with our white wire on our silver terminal of the load side. Now that I've gone ahead and finished connecting all my wires, I want to make sure that I remove the black piece of electrical tape that I put on my white line wire. And the reason I want to remove this is so that somebody doesn't come back and do any work on the circuit and think that this is a hot wire. So now that I've removed that, it's always a best practice to take a piece of electrical tape and wrap the device covering the terminal screws. This will prevent any unwanted contact between the terminal screws and the side of the box. And so now I'm going to go ahead and just adjust my wires and it's going to be really easy to fit this in because it's a slimline GFCI and we'll just mount it in the wall. There we go so I've gone ahead and finished mounting the device now I'll just take my wall plate my flathead screwdriver tighten that up and once we've done this we'll go ahead and restore the power. Let's restore the power so I've gone ahead and restored the power, and I'm going to go ahead and reset the GFCI. All Leviton GFCIs come from the manufacturing plant needing to be reset. So I press the reset button, and I see that the power indicator LED comes on. And I'm going to go ahead and test the guide light, and look at that. That'll be real nice when I come down to my kitchen for a late night snack. There you have it, how to install a Leviton GFCI. So now that I've finished installing my slimline guide light GFCI here in my kitchen, I have to say it looks great. If I wanted to install a regular slimline GFCI or the self-test slimline GFCI, they'd have been installed the exact same way. Really easy. It's another great new line of safety products from Leviton. Have a great day.